Welcome everyone to our Star Wars Rebels Season 2, Episode 2, Relics of the Old Republic After Show. If you want to see our original Episode 1 uh, review on this uh, of this Rebels season, check over on our YouTube channel or on StonerMan.net. If you guys are new to this channel, uh, in case you, you, don't, you don't know, we like to smoke down whatever we can just so you guys can be part of the chill session, part of the crew per se. And it just lets us go off topic, helps us go off topic, go on tangents, just yeah, to make us more animated, I guess. <laughs> and with me, I have the one, the only, the creator and writer of Stoner Man, Homer. What's going on, everyone? I'm so happy to be here today. Love talking Star Wars. I'm a character in the show, and as well as a co-writer with Homer. To get into the nitty of this episode, I have a few mixed opinions about it. I know that you do too, Homer. Yeah, but, but personally, overall, I think I enjoyed it more than last week's episode. Yeah, yeah, personally. yeah. Last week's was a little bit slow. I mean, which I'm fine with, as long as you get to a point. But yeah, I especially really... if there's 22 episodes this season, I can understand it. But as me personally, I didn't care for the clone troopers to come back. I just wish to. I just would have just thought they just died off or just wandered along around the galaxy doing whatever. Yeah, like, uh, I kind of like the clone troopers coming back because I didn't really watch the Clone Wars, so I yeah. thought it was, like, cool to learn a bit oh, that's about weird. the chips and stuff. But I do agree, in the first episode of the season, they were kind of bitches and they pissed me off. This episode, I didn't mind them nearly as much. Exactly. Personally. To get to our main points, we'll summarize at least a little bit of this episode and what, you know, what yeah. the main gist of it about. If you haven't seen the first episode... You're gonna be kind of lost because it's kind of yeah. You cut. definitely have to be caught up with the season. Yeah, because this episode that just aired, it pretty much starts right where the last one yeah. did, and and basically the Imperials are coming, and they're gonna bring a lot of people, a lot of weapons after the crew took out a probe droid and Commander Wolf, who was part of the clone troopers, ran them out and uh, tell told the Imperials where they were heading or hiding for the most part. A Star Destroyer came out of nowhere, and Hera pretty much had shut down her, her entire ship, in, including uh, Chopper or whatever, the, yeah. the fucking robot. I hate him so much. <laughs> Chopper is actually my least favorite thing about Rebels so Re far. Seriously? Oh I don't my really gosh. like Chopper at all. Oh. I wish he was excluded from the show. Oh, see, I, I like a lot of the characters, but he's my least favorite one thus far, but... Luckily, he had to be shut down for this episode temporarily, while Hera yeah, pretty much, back. yeah, while P Hera pretty much just sits isolated in uh, out of space, as uh, the Star Destroyer that appeared. Dude, I know. Uh, pretty Real much. quick, they don't focus on Hera that much now that you bring that up. Like she's always off to the side. I she feel is like. always off to the side, except for that one episode that she was with Sabine. That was just to so they have character or. or you know, so they can, you know, show an episode where they can communicate with each other more and stuff yeah, like that. It's character development, I understand. Yeah, I guess. Maybe they'll get more into her anyway. But, but it makes sense. She's the ship master, you know. She's also, like, co-leader and stuff like that. So, she, you know, she kind of... Yeah. And she's not really good in a firefight. She prefers to be where she's most needed, and that is in a ship. Exactly, dude. But as get she... getaway ship. Yeah, exactly. As she shut down, she pretty much tells them that a Star Destroyer comes, and uh, basically... They, the Star Star sends like one TIE fighter <laughs> after the worst and Empire employee. One of ever. our gripes, yeah, about this episode is pretty much this fucking TIE fighter that comes down and tries to intercept Kanan and his crew and uh and basically before the the clone troopers and Kanan and everyone were ready to face this threat, uh the the walker is basically just moving really slowly on the ground in a flat plane view, and the TIE fighter cannot fucking shoot yeah. it for the life of him it's basically like it makes sense a little bit when you see it in the movies because yeah, it's, it, it's like really fast and like it kind of it, it's, it makes sense you but could easily like maneuver around it ex exactly but this you was a stationary well it wasn't stationary it was very semi-stationary it was very <laughs> very slow moving giant yeah just object. just barely faster Howl's than an at, -AT. yeah that yeah exactly How, a miniature howl's moving castle exactly and it's barely moving in the middle of a desert where nothing can be seen. What else, How do you miss? Exactly. And he misses multiple, multiple times. Exactly. And, like, the few shots that they probably do see of hitting, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> so it's like, why do you have this one TIE fighter trying to take down this, like, this one thing? It's not, like, even, like, vehicle that it's not even prepared for. I, and then they, 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 they should have just left that scene out of the episode. I feel, I, like. I feel like it was stupid. Yeah, they should have had, like, ATSTs. 
maybe i don't yeah. know is that and then they ha- lead up to ATATs or something like that but no that was stupid they quickly just dispatched that tie fighter and they pretty much prepare yeah. uh to go into a sandstorm to evade all the walkers yeah the imperials at this point pretty much have AT, three ATATs like the battle of hoth trying to take mm-hmm. down this one f- fucking uh prototype of ATAT the the, the, the walker the, the clone which, troopers Which have. I love to call Howl's Moving Howl's Castle. Moving, we'll just call it Howl's Moving Castle. For the, I doubt we'll see it again. Exactly. It's, it's kind of like, a, 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 now I think about the whole moving into the storm to evade everyone. It's yeah, such a was, cliche like way to like get, evade pursuers now. Like, fucking uh, Moses came up with a similar idea like <laughs> in the fucking Bible. Like, we can't come up with anything slightly better. I don't know. And basically, the rest of the episode what? takes up in a, in a close combat stealth uh type of stalemate Mission. where the walkers yeah. just trying to quickly was, evade the AT. I was pretty big for this part so I thought that was actually pretty cool. I thought it was Yeah, that intense. I actually thought that was clever because it shows Agent Callus who again can try he's of course leading the head of this ATAT thing. He always yeah. appears in every episode. He's uh, like the agent we've been seeing since episode one. Yeah, always exactly. In case you don't know who he is, yeah, exactly. He's pretty much the bitch boy of of the Imperial ar- Army, yeah. but he's good at what he does. He he's pretty much like you trying to think like a clone and everything. He's trying to like outmaneuver and like prove his superiority that clones are outdated and stuff. Yeah, and like the and the clones and uh, Kane and everyone they have the force on their sides and the clones have their experience. They're basically having yeah, like a, a battle of wits going on. It's I, just funny and phenomenal to I see. Remember I the loved clone, it. remember the clone troopers were talking shit about the stormtroopers. They're like, yeah, bring on those stormtroopers. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna, say, I was gonna say, yeah, fuck that. Because honestly, like, it, it's embarrassing how bad the, the they can't heroes, aim. They can't aim for the fuck the, off. In the movie, stormtroopers couldn't aim. This episode, they couldn't aim with a tie fighter. Yeah, I was They're gonna literally say, literally useless. They can't take down a Wookiee that can't aim. That's <laughs> twice as big and is fucking black. And it, it definitely does not blend in any of the fucking <laughs> like styrofoam white surroundings of every Star Wars like film. Anyway, th- so basically, it's it's a stealth match. The Walker is trying to evade, and then like. Eventually, Kanan comes up with this awesome strategy because the AT-ATs, they can't find where the walker is, but Callus knows that they're not running away. They're just hiding. Yeah. And, uh, and they're actually surrounded at this point. Exactly. And Kanan basically uses the force to move the walker over and to a point where he's in the middle between, like in a circuit, like where the walkers are surrounding him so yeah. that they can shoot freely in any direction and have a greater chance and, of hitting a walker. And he could also sense the walker in the sand so uh, K- or, uh, Ezra could take the shot. Yeah, and then like basically you have one force sensitive trying to direct where the, the shooter is going to be and that's the yeah. other force sensitive which is Ezra and basically you have this whole lesson basically that you see in episode 4 where Luke, don't use the machines, use the force to help yeah. get the shot and basically... That's what Kanan does. He fucking Obi Wan. He Obi Wan's him. Oh, okay, yeah, I get you. And uh, Ezra takes a shot and hits a. Pe- and I didn't know this before. Yeah, I, this must be canon if it's in the episode, I guess. But walkers are not impenetrable. They have an Achilles heel. I didn't know it was the neck. Now it makes sense because in episode five, it was down. Like when you tie the rope around it, it falls Ooh. down. They shoot at it and it blows up. And I always wondered why. Why did then make I it guess, weak? Yeah, that does make sense. The neck. They probably so. shot the neck and stuff, so it makes sense. Because in the episode, they do show it shooting the uh, walker, but it was it didn't have no effect. Exactly, it only affected the neck. Yeah, in and that the episode. cannon that they used pretty much shot at the front, the very face of it, and every other areas around the walker and they basically take it down and they try to like ram it by the legs to bring exactly it down. exactly they pretty much just had to maneuver their walker to get into a good position to arc the fucking can to shoot it it was it was a thrilling episode and then it, it at the very end it makes you think it's gonna go one way where basically like they get out of the sandstorm they're like well fuck what do we do and we left like, the clone troopers behind yeah the clone troopers are pretty much like we'll support you and like ezra yeah. ezra's like that's actually a pretty cool line like he's like we're born to fight yeah remember? exactly yeah like the clones are like we'll support you while and basically it's a death sentence and while yeah. ezra and the crew get away 
And Ezra, of course, recant. He doesn't want them to. And they basically, pretty much as you said, they said, we're born to fight. And it's true. They literally were bred <laughs> to fight. So it it was a really heart-wrenching moment. And I was actually... Dude, but, I actually thought they were going to kill off the clones yeah, at that point. Yeah, you think they are. And it, and it, it makes it look badass. Like, they're just facing down this AT-AT. This walker yeah. is just slowly creeping up on them. Like, just face There's down, two face walkers. down. Yeah, there are two walkers left at this point. And it's just a face down between Lord Kalos and Rex, and it's just pretty badass. And it, the, the walkers the, that Rex has, is, the Howl's Moving Castle is clearly outmatched at this yeah. point. It's weak. And, and you see the smoke coming off it, especially when he gets shot in the leg. It looks pretty sad, and the music played really mm-hmm. well, I felt like, in this climactic moment. I agree. And, uh, and then, like, at the very end of the moment, the Star Destroyer that was orbiting outside the atmosphere of the planet just disappears randomly after the commander got orders from lord vader and we yeah. don't know why and so hera can now come down and rescue them and stuff power up the ship and basically based on that blind luck because otherwise they couldn't they go down and save the troops at the last minute but that star destroyer was not gone they couldn't have done that yeah I, I find it f- plot armor stupid. I, I, at that point, <laughs> that I thought that stupid. that was kind of cliche. But I can understand why people don't want their character to die. But yeah. the clones are going to die soon anyway. They're accelerating their age. They're, this is only <laughs> a few years after episode 3. Look how old they are. Yep, they don't live that long. That's why they, they replaced yeah, the clones. Yeah, they're, they're the surprised with. that these clones are alive. They, they thought they were pretty much all died out or gone crazy. Yeah, yeah, most of them went crazy. Basically, at the very end, the crew meets up with Ahsoka. Rex yeah. and Ahsoka like, have, have a heart reunion. to heart reunion, exchanging banter once again. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was a decent. It was a decent episode. Like I said, better than first. It did show the new Inquisitor. Which I was going to say really, the very same thing. Yeah, he was really badass, I thought. like I think he looks cooler than the last one. And his honest. name, apparently on the wiki, when we try to look this up for you guys, his name was like Brother Eight or uh, something? Fifth Brother. Oh, Fifth and Brother. Then, that was it. At the end of the episode, post-credits, you see like the preview to next week's episode, which I think looks better. And it shows, in that character, the chick it shows, the Sith. Yeah, there's a Sith Inquisitor, Inquisitor that is shown as well. And with she's the new called one the we... Seventh Sister, so are they all, like, related? Okay. Or is, like, a sister, like, a our brother and sister, like, a rank of the See, now I wonder if Knights of Ren in Episode 7 are possibly, like, remnants of the Inquisitors. They might be. Some, dude. like, these two probably die off, maybe. Well, yeah. And then, I, like, probably, or they I live. they're going to die off. Or there could be a couple that live that make appearances. See, in, Rogue One or something. And that's why I, I speculate. I bet that, like, last season of Rebels, they're going to hit towards a character that's going to be a major character in later episodes. I I hope to God. Yeah. Especially. And I'm I'm just hoping for major Rogue One cameos from Oh, Rebels. yeah, that too. That would be phenomenal as well. Because it's kind of the same timeline. It would be cool, yeah. No see. coincidence. Exactly. Get some of the characters down for Ro- for Rogue One. Just familiarize with them with the, car- you know, with the show. Dude, and, like, I love how, like, this expanded universe, like, all canon expanding universe is going. The ca- the canon issues, I'm learning a lot about canon before before Rebels, like, so I'm getting back history on the expanded universe now, so... And I still need to read up on that, but you strongly recommend it. I do. And like, I've seen, read the first issue, and it's pretty awesome. I'm on, like, episode three, but... On episode, episode three. I'm on... <laughs> Issue three. You got the revenge of Kanan. <laughs> but I, I saw online the episode uh, or issue seven. It's gonna be like the new story arc for Kanan. It's gonna take place like when he was a little kid in the Jedi Temple. Oh, that would be, be cool. cool. Now that I would like. So to I want to read that. Depa Balaba like teaching him because she's a cool character. She's one of Mace's only real awesome apprentices. I know, dude. So it's like a really good time to start being a uh, Star Wars fan because you could just like. It's Learn, kind of like yeah, a exactly. Because before, yeah, because I can see people before being intimidated. I was to, yeah, there was to so start much. reading in the EU, and like so much inconsistencies too. Yeah, a lot of stupid, and there's just just a lot of dumb stories. And man. I'm hoping they avoid that this time around. Exactly, fingers crossed. But you could get so deep into Star Wars, it depends. Like, like I said, history. I'm getting into the history of the expanded universe through Rebels. I just wish they had the older public. It's canon. I want it. It's canon in my eyes. I don't care. It's canon in my eyes. I don't, they they can't say it didn't happen because it's three thousand fucking years before. It's true. But my prediction, like how I totally called episode seven coming soon, I called it. But 
I predict F since the formula they're doing is saga movie spin-off movie saga movie spin-off movie set like episode seven yeah. rogue one episode eight jar jar being su- 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 <laughs> no it's gonna be the han movie remember yeah that was just getting out specific <laughs> just it's a fantasy yeah. of mine okay let right. me learn so, go- so basically they're going alternating saga spin-off movie i predict after episode nine they're gonna have one more spin-off movie then start an old republic trilogy continuing that formula I s- and I- by the time the old republic trilogy is over it'll be about 10 like uh, six or seven years since this trilogy that we're dawning on, and that'll like be ten years between trilogies, like the formula that's been going on. Like the original trilogy was like twenty years or a long ass time ago. Yeah. And then it waited like ten, twenty years until the next trilogy. Again, it waited like ten years until the next trilogy, and I predict they're going to wait ten years till the one ten. 11 and 12 come out. I agree. That's a good amount of time, I think. Because you gotta have to have this new saga that set, you know. Yes, like sink in for 10 sink years. Sink in, yeah, exactly. Because we had the prequels sink into our veins for, for 10 years, dude. Exactly. So, I mean, I mean, I personally don't mind them, but I, like I the definitely prequels. understand the hate because I have a lot of hate towards episode 2. Me too. And a few things towards episode 1 and 3, but. I love them. Just minor things, but yeah. this, well, I could still watch up Guilty to one pleasures. or three any day of exactly. the week. Exactly. That's how, big a, that's how big a fan I guess I am. I even like the not-so-great stuff. I feel like a fan, you have to appreciate it, all of it. But yeah, I really hope... Because like in, in the ten years, Disney doesn't want to not make Star Wars movies, so they might as well make Yeah, it I over... do not want to make money. And they want to do a Star Wars... no corporation ever. They want to do it like how they're doing Marvel. It's... Marvel movie every year. They went Star Wars movie See, every year. See, and I, and I predict that too because by that time, Marvel's going to run out of steam with its hero movies. It's going to happen. Star Wars might overtake it. Exactly, because that's at least a different thing. It's sci-fi. It's a whole different universe. Like, people will yeah. be like, oh, it's explosions, it's robots, or something <laughs> like that. In case, even though there are not many robots in Star Wars. I mean, there are, but I mean, like, they're not shown a lot, but... You know what I mean. Some like cool drawing. It's a whole new world. It's like seeing Lord of the Rings. Like Mixed with sci-fi. After seeing like the Avengers, I don't think Lord of the Rings is like, oh, it's another action <laughs> fantasy <laughs> shit. Like the heroes. Like, no. So, it's Lord of the Rings. Plus, it's, it's a, a dream thing. of mine to see an old Republic movie. Especially since I don't remember the games that well. I haven't played them in years. Yeah. Oh, so, so might as well I do play movies. Them. I play especially them. for those who's never played. I played them way too many times not to get at least the main plot down and all the mates the basic ideas for the <laughs> subplots within yeah. the main plots. So and they could and if there's any iffy things they could just get rid of them if they want. I exactly. Guess. And just improve upon it. Although I do like the Revan book because I like the way some some things. And I wish they incorporate, a, if they do incorporate a love thing for Revan and stuff, Redemption and all that jazz, I wonder, since it'd be the, really good. Since the canon's starting to get into uh, Sith relics, I wonder if they'll have any from the Old Republic, like Revan's Mask or something cool. I like really that. do hope so. I don't even know, I haven't read but it. But at that point, I'm afraid it's going to be cliche to have masks. Because it's like, is everyone going to have a mask now? But it's like, Revan was the original fucking person that... To, Put on mask in like Star Wars, like that's it's, it's unfair, and he is the best one. I still like it. It's way better than Kylo Ren's. You think so? Oh, I def- I, 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 don't, I need to see. This I'm gonna put shit. up a comparison after this. I'm sorry, <laughs> you're gonna have to see a difference. But oh, I'll check it out. Kylo Ren, I think, still looks pretty sick. To yeah, be honest. I, I do like him too, but um, I, I don't think th- he looks as cool as Darth Vader. Am Driver, he looks he, f- and that's the thing that annoys me. He looks so much like Revan. His physique, his his hair. Like it's all like in the books and everything. That that that's that's Revan. <laughs> like literally, and that pisses me off. What if he is Revan somehow? That would be cool, but I don't think. You know what? At this point, since they already have a guy that's pretty much so much like him, I, it's more convincing that I don't think they're ever gonna introduce, and that makes me sad. Oh, that he's, would he's, suck. He's, what he's would more, they do for an old Republic movie? Darth Bane or something? I don't, I don't want Darth Bane. I mean, I, I mean, I do like the books. Definitely look awesome and i want to read them i hear they're fantastic they're, i hear they're fantastic as well and i know a lot of a darth bane i just revan's old republic stories it's just it's way just way, way more interesting oh the lore 
It's so much better. Oh my god. Well, then fingers it's, crossed. The lore is better than the actual episodes, but the episodes, like the movies, are timeless classics. I just don't want to talk about Dude. Skywalker. I don't care about Skywalker anymore. I mean, like, the Skywalker lineage. I want... Someone new, something. Nah, dude. I think I think the saga movies will always be Skywalker, but that's why <sighs> the spinoff movies me. are gonna be cool. But I just thought about another thing to add to our uh, Old Republic theory. Like, wouldn't it, if they have references to the Old Republic in this trilogy, wouldn't it, like the Old Republic trilogy be like the ultimate prequels? That would be the best. Pre- they you would need three like, movies for the Old Republic. That would be the ultimate prequels to this new trilogy. Because it, it would still be kind of the formula, saga, prequels, saga, prequels. Exactly. No, no, That'd no. be interesting. That would be pretty cool. Honestly, yeah, you would at least probably need three movies for all the public. Because you don't need all of KOTAR 2. There's probably, it's probably, it's dark, and I feel like you'll have a lot of pacing issues. But you can cut a few things and add a few things to make it a lot better. Like, it's doable, but it's basically the book. I, I like the I book, know. how it concluded. Slightly. Me too. Do back to Star Wars Rebels. This episode. Oh yeah, sorry, dude. Yeah, that happens sometimes. We, we get a little too big. Go yeah, on these exactly. Tangents. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, dude. I'm sure our fans love our old Republic theory. I'm sure. I'm just. I'm too sure a, they agree. I'm, I'm too appeased from in the state of my nature right now. I'm, I'm just appeasement all over. And the chill music. Yeah, too. exactly. The Star Wars music really does help. But honestly, overall, it, I'd give it a dank. And, wait, wait, Homer, before you... Oh, yeah. Now, we have a different grading scale in terms of how we like to uh, grade all of our reviews on either video games or movies, or in this case, shows. Uh, We go from the lowest rank, which is mids. We go to the lowest point, which is resin. And then after that stage, which is a little bit better, is mids. And then after that, we have dank. And after that, you have the best the dabs. Basically, uh, that's an A. That's a that's a legendary rank. Yeah. That's one that like you have regardless. What we hope what episode you, seven to be. Your ideals are you have to see it or play it or something. And then pretty much Dank is like most people will enjoy. Yeah, it's like a solid B B plus. Then, like, mids is just, like, for... It might be for us, maybe not for Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. I was going to say, mids, I've always had a, a good memory of that back on hard days <laughs> with money. Yeah, it's like, if you... Ha- it's just for certain people. Yeah. So yeah, I would probably rate it... Uh, I'd give it a... I'd give it a dank, just because I really like that storm scene, especially with Kanan, like, tuning in his force powers a little more, showing that he might be ready to step up to master well not master but like take that role as master over ezra i get, also agree i would give it a dang but it did have it, its, it's bad moments only argue. because it's this episode particular because it was better than the last week's episode but this whole arc that happens between the those two yeah that. yeah it, it wasn't that good, but they that they did a little bit better job in, in episode two, and I'm super excited for the next episode, which looks amazing. It looks right. like episode five all over again with a like Cloud City trap sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, it kind of gave me like a Halloween vibe, which I... Oh, which, very clever. And it comes out the week of Halloween. That, that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. If you guys want to hear us uh, talk about that episode, tune in, tune in on, on Wednesday... And if you guys want to hear our opinion on that episode, make sure to tune in on Wednesday, which ho- which will most likely have that episode up at either afternoon or evening sometime. Yeah. We don't know. It's always random. It depends on how much we get our shit done. And also, don't forget to check out our main podcasts, which are on Tuesdays. So, Tuesday and Wednesday, a little special thing going on. Cause Every you, week. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Mondays suck, but Tuesdays and Wednesdays... Hopefully we can make yeah, them a we'll little get bit you better the for week. you. Yeah, hopefully. Easy a little bit. And if you want to check out all the rest of our material on Stoner Man, make sure you check out our website, stonerman.net. And if you would like to donate, uh, we have a link in the description on the website if you want to donate for us. Because we honestly, uh, we, in order for us to have enough material like to showcase... The comedy of the show. Yeah, yeah. Or like or TV producers or something that like just to give them a concept of what we are we need an, 
lot of money for animation. <laughs> we were kind of stupid to think how yeah animation cheap is not we thought, as cheap as yeah we yeah were we thought like for like three hundred bucks or something like or five hundred bucks like we can pay for like a couple a, minutes a couple minutes yeah no but it, that's not the case it's like a thousand for like a minute so it, and this is like looking through like so many different people and they're coming around the same ridiculous price and I understand it's a hard thing I was just yeah. I, I was just naive. Or if there's any animators that's willing to work for cheap, always message us at Stonerman Animation. And we would definitely and we will definitely show yeah. off your material and everything. We will definitely advertise for you. We oh, will yeah. definitely make sure you get a benefit out of this because we definitely would thank you. Yeah, we'd be so we'd appreciate it so much. And a free chill session every now and then. <laughs> Winky face. Have a good night, everyone, and always remember, may the force be with you. Always. always.